espaço para a Sojra, do qual eu tenho muita honra de participar. E hoje eu sou vice-presidente uh -huh. da sociedade. Dr. Sultan. Thank you so much, Armando, for this nice introduction, and the ladies and gentlemen. And, and I think a lot of you are uh, very young, but some of you are already um, on this uh, uh, drug called statin that uh, I have a colleague of mine who wants to put it in water. So um, I'll try to be uh, uh, as clear as I can. Can I have my slides in front of me here, please? And get the audio on, please. Um, I'll try to be as uh, clear as I can to talk to you about the statin and what's going on and what's the reality and what you haven't been told and what was hidden from you totally. Um, so, uh, primary and secondary cardiovascular prevention, a reality and myth about a tablet per day that will not keep the doctor away. I still I don't have my slides in front of me, please. And we need the audio on. Thank you so much. So, I didn't employ any of the 76,000 published articles that any of the author had acknowledged receiving funding or research education grants from any pharmaceutical industry or an employee of the following, and you could read all of them. And all of them, you will know about what they sell for you. And in fact, you could see that um, I don't see a conflict doc by the FDA, which is uh, really alarming, and I don't know how they allow this is happening. We've been told that medications to lower cholesterol will save lives. We repeatedly hear from patients that their doctors tell them, if you don't take this, you will die. Over 40 million people worldwide take drugs to lower their cholesterol. But now there's evidence that the majority of them won't benefit. None of those people are less likely to die. Of course they're going to try to minimize the adverse events because that will increase the sales of their drugs. And it's a fact, it's certainly scientific fraud, and, it, and it's a fact, it's organized crime. So, um, Ansel is the father of this theory. He has created the theory since Eisenhower died from a heart attack, and he tried to um, frighten everybody that cholesterol is bad to which the front of the time in 1984, the war in fat and cholesterol was global. <coughs> However, it took the Time magazine 53 years to acknowledge the mistake, and they put it back again on the front of the magazine. The Time magazine is much more stronger than Nature and New England Journal of Medicine because the number of readers it is far superior than anything else. Yeah. We are observing the rebuilding of the utmost medical tragedy of all times. Never before in history had the medical institution deliberately produced a life-threatening nutrient deficiency in millions of otherwise healthy people. Any negative steps on statin are discouraged and critical research are blackmailed. I myself have lost more than 2.6 million in research funding because of that. So why the drawbacks of statin drugs hidden until its patent expires? I researched the internet to see side effects of statin and started by uh, one of, out of uh, five in 2008, and it went up to uh, cholesterol lowering drug and the job of controversy and said, basically there is no evidence for primary prevention, to which that they said that the manipulation in the stats in it in um, 2009, until the statin use associated with increased heart, uh, risk of cataract, myopsy, liver dysfunction, acute renal failure was very number related to harm. Then we start getting it to 2011 when the numbers are increasing now, 55. And statin myopsy, a common dilemma not um, reflected in clinical trial. And that's why there's a lot of unnecessary hip replacement because of that. And then the FDA expand advising statin risk and say that yes, it causes diabetes. Yes, it causes erectile dysfunction. Yes, it causes depression. Until in January 2012, a survey of the FDA database regarding muscle um, and tendon adverse effect until one of the astronauts were going through um, um, the space station, 40 years of age, takes statin, starts running, he got amnesia and that <coughs> alarmed everybody. And in fact, statin on creatinine kinase, and this was one of them. So coming towards 2012, progression of vascular classification, if you take statin, it causes the problems of vitamin T K2 in your body, cause accelerated atherosclerosis. You do a FEMPO bypass, give the patient morphine and statin, the patient comes back to you. You don't know why the proximal um, iliac and the distal popliteal have closed. The reason for that, you're giving statin. It allows the vitamin K2 to be um, a completely disarray, increase the calcification. And then after that, the same statin use and coronary artery plaque uh, composition results from the International Multicentury Confirmed Registry said that 
static cause accelerated acid growth. So you're taking it to prevent a problem at creating a disaster. And then the epidemic of a cataract in type 2 diabetic patient is taking use and then lasted the um, impotence in women, uh, in men, and the problem with Viagra led by the same company. It's a major criticism that has been raised against uh, using statins for primary prevention in completely healthy people. I mean, we are all going to die. And if we don't have some certainty that by taking a drug for decades, we will expect to live longer. And when we don't know really what the harms are, because they are always badly reported, then we have a problem. Now we started to look at why people had a heart attack, and the two thirds of people admitted with acute myocardial infarction have metabolic syndrome, but 75 of these patients have completely normal total cholesterol concentration. This is because total cholesterol is not the problem. It's the rupture of plaque, the platelet plug, and the acute thrombosis have nothing to do with cholesterol. The problem is scarring of the endothelium, have nothing to do with your cholesterol. Then let's look at the ASCOT LLA, and they're trying to do a relative risk reduction. Relative risk reduction doesn't mean anything. Anybody try to tell you anything with relative risk reduction, he's lying at you. And the reason for that, they have found that there is no problem with any of this problem because they manipulated and deception for the relative risk reduction. And this is from the ASCOT LLA trial. They said that taking atrovastatin 98.1 versus placebo 97. So the relative risk reduction of 1.2 have mushroom to 76% from absolute reduction 1.1. So it doesn't mean sense, no. But what they have done, then they went on and put it to sell something like Lipitor. Lipitor reduced the risk of by a heart attack by 76%. Can you imagine this is what they have put in the ad? So people talking to the high court, and this has changed completely to 1% because it dropped from 3 to 2%. And that's why they're trying to bring motion. Statistical deception by a relative risk reduction doesn't stand in court of law. Then the Anglo-Scandinavian cardiac outcome. And what they found that the problem of decreasing of all-cause mortality best attribute reduction in a non-cardiovascular death, it had nothing to do with um, um, cardiovascular death whatsoever. And to date, no definite explanation to the effect of statin. In any event, you shouldn't consider the case of discontinuation of statin use. So they don't know exactly what's going on after 14 years. And this is all had LLT trial, and in it, Despite 28% reduction in LDL in the statin group, all had trial failed to show any benefit in either all cause mortality, combined non fatal and fatal myocardial infarction. How can this be? Why didn't all had LL work? Because there was no benefit, because the trial of paravastatin, because it's the only major non industry fund study on statin done to date. Let's look again at a New England Journal about the Rosovo, and in here, a Rosovo was 98% versus placebo 97.2. So there was absolute risk reduction of 1.2 for the drug group over placebo. But statistical deception through relative risk reduction, this was mushroomed in a publication 38%, and another publication of the same company 54%. And in fact, they started uh, sending coupon for Crestor in the United States to give it to people. Australia's National Heart Foundation is examining new American guidelines for cholesterol lowering medication. The new guidelines greatly expand the number of Americans that would be eligible to receive statin drugs from about 36 million previously to as many as 72 million now. The only way to do that, there'll be somebody getting a lot of dollars in their back pocket. Paul Ritger and Nancy Cook of Brigham and Women's Hospital looked at published studies of patients with cardiovascular disease and say the new calculator significantly overestimates the risk. And the calculator may suggest statin treatment for about twice as many middle-aged Americans as actually may significantly benefit from it. One of the recent articles in the New York Times showed that 12 out of the 15 panel group are affiliated with the industry. The drug industry buys influential doctors. Uh, and these doctors are allowed to sit in guideline committees. Can we forward next, please? We have a problem, Houston. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, memory impairment and uh, uh, statin amnesia 
and the long-term uh, setting use and risk of ductal and lobular breast cancer. One in three women, uh, if they are post-menopausal, go on statin, they will develop cancer breast. And um, if you take statin, you will sure go to get congestive cardiac failure because the patient calls out you 10 and it's contraindicated to give it to patient with congestive cardiac heart, heart failure or patient with aortic stenosis. Uh, I can't forward the slides. Uh, the other side of statin, this was one of our publications. Uh, next, please. I can't forward the slides. Statin should be prescribed for primary prevention in women of any age or for men older than 69. Uh, this is when I was still naive and putting 6 to 9. Absolute risk reduction of 0 0.5 means that 6 to 7 people have to be treated for 5 years to prevent one event. Next slide, please. And next slide. There's category lack of clinical evidence to support the use of statin therapy in primary prevention. Prescribed statin for cardiovascular disease in the elderly, and the elderly in here is above 60, by the way. And uh, I can't forward the slides. Uh, more clarity needed on the true benefit, and this is a war between myself and um, um, John Robertson from uh, Harvard and Asim uh, Malharta from the UK. And we discovered that you give uh, statin to anybody above the age of 80, they get an anti-cerebral bleed because the cholesterol is the only protective mechanism in this um, age group. Next slide, please. Now, the study give it to uh, children, and there's concern about the effectiveness of this recommendation and about causing anticipated harm. So please stay away from our children. Next slide, please. Because there's no evidence to give any statin to children. If you have a child and you check his cholesterol and it's high, that's normal, don't come near him. Get him out in the air, let him to run, do some activity, go to the playground and stop giving him your iPad or your mobile phone because that's crazy. Government reports, there's evidence of selective reporting of outcome with failure to report adverse events or inclusion of people with cardiovascular disease. There's no evidence that primary prevention with statin is cost effective. Any expectation for statin use haven't been met. Instead, they have found a pattern of overestimation of benefit and underestimation of harm. Oxford CTT has a, a commercial agreement with pharmaceutical companies and refused to release any data in spite we have officially asked for that. Seven members of the guideline panel are involved in the next generation more expensive cholesterol drug which aren't yet on the market, but it will come very shortly. If cholesterol lowering becomes established in low-risk people, indication for protein, antisense drugs, and the PCSK9 inhibitor will expand as well with estimated profit of $150 billion. And I'll show you why at the end of this talk. I need to go forward, please. And this is the uh, publication about the uh, four-year um, trial in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is part of the, next slide please, which is part of the PCCSK inhibitors, uh, was able to lower the number of heart attack by 1.5 versus 1.8 in placebo, so less than 0.3%. The trial went on for 26 months. It means that to prevent one heart attack per year, it's necessary to treat 140 patients. As the cause for one year treatment is about 14,000, it means that the cost for preventing one heart attack per year is more than $2 million. I don't think anybody wants to agree on this. The number of this has increased, and that's why they stopped the trial at 26 months. There was 444 died in the treatment group, but only 4 to 6 in the placebo. And the number of car sudden cardiac deaths have quadrupled in the treatment group. A four-year trial, three of the main authors are employed at uh, Amgen, the, uh, the company that owns the patent. Next slide, please. Just can you have uh, audio? <laughs> it's not enough with reforms because the whole system is so rotten that we need a revolution. And one of the first things is that doctors should look at themselves in the mirror and ask themselves, can I really defend accepting money from a corrupt industry, uh, which business model is organized crime that has caused the death of hundreds of thousands of patients over the years. Can I really accept to get money from an industry like that? I think the answer is very simple. You must say no. Next slide, please. 
and this is the, uh, my publication, a British, model, um, uh, British uh, medical journal. Uh, elderly people with high LDL lives as long or longer than those with low LDL. So if you need to, sh to live shorter, lower your LDL, you'll end having a problem. Our analysis provides reason to question the validity of the cholesterol hypothesis. Our study provides rationale for re-evaluation of guidelines recommending pharmacological reduction of LDL in the elderly. Next. So we go back to the title that I've given to me. Statins contraindicated for any patient over the age of 62, any woman and all children. I have shown you the scientific evidence. Don't get brainwashed. Think before you're going to prescribe it again because there's a lot of things that you don't know and I don't know why this happened. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present our work in here in Sao Paulo.